Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I went through a little rebranding exercise a while back. I separated this brand, Cyber Reef Guru, from our product making business, CRG Makes. I decided to keep the CRG Makes business as our digital content company, and that is where we'll provide plans, files, and other non-physical products. On the physical side, I created a new brand that more clearly represents what we do and the products that we provide. Enter Flying Ninja Woodworks. I plan on a future video about how I used AI to help generate the new logo, create script for the website, and generally help with the branding. If that interests you, please consider subscribing, and if there is something specific you want to know about, leave your comments below and I will address it in the upcoming video. This video, however, will focus on the process I created to quickly make new stickers for the company. I am so pleased with the process and its universal applicability to a wide range of product development tasks that I decided to create this video showing the process. I will be using Affinity Designer, my new favorite vector program, to create the artwork, but you can use any vector program like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. I used to be a massive fan of Inkscape, but its performance has lagged over the years, and for a period of about two years or so, it was so slow on my Mac that it was essentially unusable. That's when I started looking for the new vector program. I didn't want to shell out the horrifying amount of money that Adobe wants for Creative Suite, and right around that time, that is when I found Affinity. Thanks to Nick from Logos by Nick, link in the description below, for the excellent suggestion and the excellent videos. After the free trial, I was hooked on its speed, usability, and overall fit and finish. Look, I have no affiliation with Serif, the company that makes the Affinity products. I am just a happy customer. So happy, in fact, that I recently upgraded Designer, purchased a license for Photo and Publisher. I don't use Publisher that much, but Designer and Photo have become my go-to applications for creating thumbnails, cover art, and diagrams. I will leave a link down below in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Okay, so let's flip over to the computer and I will show you the process that I developed to quickly take a logo or text and create different designs that are print ready for stickers, magnets, and a host of other products. All right, let's get on with it. Here we are in front of the computer. What you see in front of you is I have pulled up Affinity Designer. By default, it will open the new document screen and uh, provide you with a couple different options, different presets for different file sizes, and then an area in the center where you can customize it. And I will walk through that in just a moment. And then after that, what I will do is I will give a quick overview of the user interface and we'll dive right into the tutorial. Okay, so what we have right here in the center is you have a couple tabs right here that allow you to customize your uh, documents you're creating here. So I have just selected an eight and a half by 11 size uh, layout. I have set it at 2400 DPI. So if you're doing some design here that you want to turn into stickers or you want to print into a large format, you definitely want a higher DPI to give you that better resolution when you ultimately convert your file into a pixel file. If you don't know the difference between pixel and vectors, well then I encourage you to check this video out right here. I just did a video about the differences of the two. The next area here is color, and so you have a couple different options here in the drop-down. RGB is the one you most frequently work with if you're creating some sort of logo. However, because we're specifically doing this to print it, you definitely want to work in the CMYK color space. What that does is that, it, that is the color space that your printer is going to use to print everything, and by working in this color space, you get very accurate color representations rather than having your print house uh, convert from an RGB to the CMYK and then getting you to proof the new colors. I just find it easier to work in CMYK whenever I know it's something that I want to print versus something that I'm going to use on the web as a graphic, for example. The other thing that you want to make sure is selected here is transparent background. That'll really help us when we get into the design phase, and I'll show you uh, what I mean by that whenever we get there. A couple areas here, you have the margins if you want to set those, the bleed if you're going to use that, and then scaling again if you want to use that or not use using any of that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to click 
create and it's going to create a new blank document. So that checkered pattern there is just indicating that what is in the checkered area is transparent. You won't see that if you save it as a PNG, for example. However, just note if you do save it as a JPEG, JPEG does not support transparency, so you won't get any of those effects. So you definitely want something like PNG or even um, a WebP file, for example, which is a kind of a newer modern version of PNG. So before we get started with the tutorial, just want to give you a quick run through of the user interface. What you have on the left hand side here is a typical toolbar with all your different tools for doing your editing. Across the top are a variety of different parameters that you can set. They vary by the tool, so they will change based on the tool that you have selected. And then on the right hand side, what you have is a couple different tabbed areas. There's actually multiple tabs across the top here, and then tabs right here, and there's also tabs across the bottom. So at initial blush, this might seem a little bit overwhelming to a new user. It is a little bit more complicated than say something like Inkscape, uh, but it is patterned sort of after Illustrator. So if you're familiar with that tool, you should be familiar with this one. I will get into some of these tabs and why they're important in just a little bit, but for right now, we're just gonna dive right in. We're just gonna select this text tool here and we're gonna go ahead and just click on the canvas and type in all uppercase flying ninja woodworks.com and I'm going to click this arrow right here that allows us to move it around. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I just want to set the font that I want to use. And so the theme that we have for this new branding is we have a font called uh, Her uh, Herculanum, Herculanum right there. And so that's the font that we use for a lot of our accent fonts on the website here. And so I really like this one. It kind of has that Japanese vibe to it, which is what I was going for, for the ninja effect. All right. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit by clicking and grabbing the corner here. It works just like most tools do. Okay. So now that we have our text laid down on the canvas, what I want to do is I want to start by copying that text and duplicating it. So the easiest way to do that is to copy uh, control C, control V and you can see over here in this uh, tab here over here where it lists the layers it shows that we now have two copies of that text and uh, just by way of note that red squiggly line is just uh, affinity designers way of telling you that there's a misspelled word that could be very handy depending on what you're trying to do but obviously this specific URL is uh, not a real world per se so now that we have these two texts selected what I want to do is I want to first turn off the top one and then select the bottom one and I will explain why just shortly. Okay, so next step is we want to go under layer here and we want to select convert to curves. So what that's going to do, it's going to take our text and it's going to turn it into vectors, uh, vectors that we can edit the curves for. So let's go ahead and select that. And you will see immediately what happened over here in the layers tab, it created a group. And if we open that group, it, the group is just a, a, a bunch of curves that represent the letters. And if we wanted to, if we zoom in here, you can see there's all these different nodes. We, we can move the nodes around and we we can edit this if we wanted to. That is not necessarily what we are going to do, however, for this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these individual curves. I'm going to zoom back out. Uh, and then Infinity has this really cool tool called Contour. What that allows you to do is expand or contract these curves based off the original curve. And so that's what's going to do the magic or the heavy lifting here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select that tool. And you can see it puts a box around all of the words here with the different anchor points here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the top right corner here and we're just going to drag it. And you can see how it is expanding that. And you can see in the center here, if I zoom in, you can see the original curve and then how it is expanding it. And so I'm going to go ahead and expand it just a little bit right here and then focus here on the top. It actually allows you to dial in a very specific radius if that's something you choose to do. This is really important if you want to duplicate some work that you were doing and have the exact same curves. The next thing to know too is there's the contour type. We have it set to the default of a, of a rounded uh, joint type. The other option is a corner or a miter. So if you are using a CNC for example, and you have text and it is a little too fine for the end mill that you have, and you want to make it a little bit fatter, but you want to keep all those 
corners, then you would select this miter joint uh, for your expansion and it'll keep all those 90 degree angles, uh, but it'll also uh, expand your font a little bit to give it a little more of a bold feeling and allow that bit to get in there and meld that material. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just set this at, I like uh, 0.1 inches here. Uh, for my uh, curve, I found that to work pretty well. So I'm going to click the Move tab to get out of the Contour tool. And what we have is a bunch of curves still. So what we need to do is we need to stitch all these curves together. And the easiest way to do that is to use the power of a vector program and do a Boolean add. So I have added this to my toolbar up here where I can just click this icon. Alternatively, you can go into Layer into geometry and here are all of your boolean functions you can also merge the curves and separate them these are very useful if you have a a predefined vector that has a lot of artifacts in it you can separate them edit all the individual artifacts and then merge them back together as one unit. In this case, what we want to do is we want to select add because we literally want to fuse all these vectors together and get rid of all the, um, the crossing of vectors that we have. So I'm going to click add here and you can immediately see what happened. On the right hand side, the group that was a group of individual letters is now one curve and all the individual lines in the middle have disappeared. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly edit this to do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm going to click on the node tool here. What that allows you to do is select every individual node inside your graphic here. And so one thing about Affinity Designer is it'll give you a little red square or a red node to indicate that that is a starting node for your curve. The key thing here is you only want one of those red nodes. Uh, you only want to have one start. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to check this out. So it looks like this one right here is attached to the main curve, so we want to keep that one. However, this one is attached to a little bit of artifact. We want to delete that, so we'll select all those nodes and we'll hit the delete key. And then we're going to scan the rest of the design here. So we have another one right here. We'll delete on that one, another one right there. So it looks like right near the top of every one of these curves, we seem to have uh, one of those little artifacts. No big deal. We'll delete all of them and then Scanning some more. We have this big thing in the middle. We want to get rid of that. And then yeah, we got one right here. Wow. All right, so very teeny sort of artifact here. Probably won't be a big deal, but we're going to delete it anyway. Okay, so what we now have is this outline of our letters. You have that uh, kind of cloud-esque or scalloped outline of your letters. It is perfect for die cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select move here. I'm going to make this white by selecting on the curve and then uh, sliding the slider here. Now in Affinity, just like most programs, you can select the types of colors you want to work with, whether it's RGB, CMYK, or grayscale. In this case, I have a tendency to work in HSL. It's just a little bit easier to move some of these colors around if you're dealing in kind of shades of gray, for example. So I'm going to slide the luminosity here up to 100 and then saturation down to zero, which gives us a completely white picture. Uh, alternatively, we could have turned it to RGB and then uh, slid the RGB values uh, to 100% to give us white as well. All right, so now we have that, we can turn our text back on and look what we have, right? So we have that kind of scalloped cloud in the background, perfect for die cutting uh, to making a sticker if you wanted to have your URL right here on the sticker. And so that is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. So a couple little cleanup items I think we need to do. We need to uh, probably take our text here and just drop it down into this group. So we have it all as one. We want to keep that layer, that ordering that the text is above that curve in this layer tab here so that uh, make sure that you can see that text. The next thing we want to do is just move on to the next example. I want to show you now that we've done this sort of die cut version, let's go ahead and make a bumper sticker out of it that serves the same purpose, but this one's going to be rectangular and it's going to be white on black instead of black on white. So we're going to start by just selecting that text. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it again and then drag it down here. Then we want to select our rectangular tool here. And so we're going to go ahead and just hide that for now. 
We're going to select our rectangle tool. We're going to just going to draw our rectangle right over the text. We will move it around in just a minute. So what you see again here, you have the rectangle, which is in the layer ordering. It is above the text. So what we want to do is we want to slide it down just like that. And now you can see that the font comes out on, on top of the, the rectangle here. We want to make the rectangle black. So a couple different ways to do that now. We could slide the slider around just like this by uh, dragging the luminosity down if we wanted to. That's one way to do it. The other way is there's some uh, colors here that are already predefined. You can just select that. That's a quicker way to do it as well. And then we want to select our text. We want to make that white. So we want to take our luminosity, uh, drag it all the way up, and now we have white. All right, so a little bit of a sizing that we want to do here down in the lower right hand corner of Affinity Designer here, you have the current location, the rotation, uh, whether or not it is skewed in any manner or form, and then the overall size. This little guy here allows you to set the aspect ratio where it locks the two into each other. So if you change one, it'll change the other by a proportional amount. Or if you unselect it, it'll allow you to edit them independently. So for right now, I want to set this to eight inches and I want to set this to 1.5. And then I'm going to lock that aspect ratio right there. And then select our font and just blow it up a little bit. So we're going to slide this over. Blow that up a little bit. So that looks pretty good. It's pretty big. Now we can just drag in the middle to give it a little extra dimension, just like this. So it doesn't look too squished, but it looks pretty good. So that looks pretty good. Now we have our basic bumper sticker so we can go off and have these printed. One thing that we want to do, we want to make sure that they're aligned. So I have put into the toolbar my align center and align middle. Now by default, these are not in the toolbar, so you would have to add them. But you can just simply go under layer. You select um, alignment, align center and align middle. It's right there. Super easy. So align middle, align center. There you go. And we have it completely centered. And if we want to select both of these two, we want to hit Control G or Command G to group them. Uh, and now we have our two groups. We have our slightly smaller sticker with our URL on it and the slightly larger um, bumper sticker that we can use for just about any purpose. And so it is that simple. I really love this workflow. I love that I can use to create die cut stickers with it. I love that I could use it to fatten text a little bit for my CNC. That was a really transformational moment for me that really helped things out because I was always using fonts. I found them too small. When I would mill them, I would just burn through some of the lines because it wasn't cutting deep enough. This allows you to thicken it ever so slightly. And that is where that radius value in the top becomes very useful because you can set it to very fine numbers. You can set it to only you know, 0.05 or 0.02 inches or even millimeters, maybe half a millimeter or so to give you just a little bit extra space for that milling operation. So now that we see the power of what we can do here, I just want to quickly show you some of the logos that I came up with, starting with the, uh, the Flying Ninja Woodwork full logo. What you see here is you got that ninja right there in the center with that really cool wooden background. Got the little sword sticking out of the back of his head. And then I use this exact technique to create this white barrier or white right border around it that we have used to create some die cut stickers. And so I love the Flying Ninja across the bottom, the Woodworks part. Uh, you can see that same font right there. I've given it a little bit more of a distinction by using some gray and some black and some highlights there, but it's really, really awesome. The other thing that you can do is I'll click onto this guy is you can actually create entire sticker sheets that can be die cut. And so something like this you can have created, it's just an entire sticker sheet that has multiple stickers on it that can be kiss cut or die cut for you. So this is considered kiss cut. What that means is it'll cut the vinyl so you can peel the sticker off, but it doesn't go all the way through so they're not already pre-cut. And so I created uh, all these little ninjas here. I found some uh, artwork online. I cleaned them up. I created the uh, outline around them to have that, that kind of little border. And the idea is here is we can create an entire sheet of ninjas for people, uh, whether we're giving them to our customers or just giving them away say, at craft fairs or something like this. But I think these guys are really cute. I'm using them on lots of our other artwork and some of our marketing material, just as little accents. I think it's really, really cool. All right, so that is the the power of Affinity Designer, that is the simplicity of what you can do with some of these tools to make really quick, easy effects on your text to create either stickers, die cut stickers, or even bumper stickers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And don't forget to be inspired.